Okay, let's talk about our next problem of the day, where we're going to get into both a heat exchanger and a turbine example, based on our process equipment examples from before. So let's think about heat exchangers, because heat exchangers are something, well, you took an entire class on already, so you should be very comfortable with them. But we're going to think about them in a way that uh, maybe you haven't been thinking about them in a while. So we're not so much fussed right here about rate. You already did that in heat transfer. We're going to think about amount, how much energy is moving around and how do we make that work. So let's imagine a counter current heat exchanger. And we're going to just draw it right up here on the board with the hot side going from left to right and the cold side going from right to left. And uh, let's use some uh, just variable names to name it. So we're going to have TC in coming in on the cold side, and then it's going to head out on the other side, and its mass flow rate is going to be consistent as M dot sub C uh, going across there. And then on the hot side, we'll have something similar. There's a TH in, a TH out, and an M dot H. Note those two M dots don't have to be the same thing. Um, and so my question, and I'm going to ask you to uh, think about each of these separately, and then we'll put them all together, is uh, write three different energy balances for this. I want you to write an energy balance for just the hot side. I want you to write an energy balance for just the cold side. And then I want you to write an energy balance for the whole thing. And something important to remember as you are writing these is a heat exchanger is uh, insulated with respect to the outside surroundings. So we expect all of the energy to be exchanged to be just between the cold side and the hot side, not with the surroundings. All right, so that is problem one for problem of the day. Okay, everybody, now it's time to also think about our second problem of the day. So you can work on these in whatever order you want, but I want you to work on both of them. Our other thing was just to do a simple example with a turbine to make sure everybody understands how to work with a turbine and steam. So we're going to imagine we have a turbine, uh, it's got one in, it's got one out, and it's working with steam. Um, this is a pretty good assumption most of the time they're going to work with steam. I'll tell you if they're working with something else. And when we're working with steam, you should always use the steam tables, either online or the version that's from your book. And you should do that because steam can condense, which ideal gases can't. So you're going to get different answers if you are calling steam an ideal gas. All right, so coming in, let's assume we have a temperature of 500 degrees C and a pressure of 2 megapascals. And then coming out, we're going to have a temperature of 300 degrees C and a pressure of uh, 0.5 megapascals. And uh, I want you to note, later on in the semester, when we start learning about entropy, you're going to be able to do this calculation with knowing only the pressure without being the temperature given. But this time, I'm giving you the temperature because we're not ready for that yet. So I want you to do an energy balance on this and tell me what is uh, WS. And uh, also, I want you to remember that a turbine is uh, insulated, so it should not, in this case, we should not have a uh, heat exchange with the outside. So they, we should be able to neglect a Q term, at least for this portion of the uh, calculation. 